one of the greatest legacies of St. John Paul II was the massive body of teachings he completed in his lifetime. This was the Pope who gave the Church the theology of the body in the Apostolic Exhortation, Familiaris Consortio on Family Life. He loved the family and decided to parallel the United Nations International Year of the Family by declaring that the same year was a special Year of the Family for the Church. He kept the family as a central focus in 1994 when he issued a letter for families. In May of that same year, he beatified the heroic doctor Gianna Beretta Mola. Gianna, who is now a saint, had given her life in 1962 to ensure the safe birth of her child and is revered as a role model for the family. St. John Paul's passion for the family culminated when he instructed the Pontification Council for the Family to establish an international gathering of families. The meeting was intended to bring families from all over the world together to witness the truth of family life, pray, teach, and to show the world that only in the authentic family is there hope for the future. A month before the Cairo Conference, the first World Meeting of Families was held in Rome, October 8th and 9th, with the theme of the family, the heart of the civilization of love. Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World Television Networks USA, Salt and Light TV, Shalom TV India, EWTN at Madarshan TV, Radio Maria in England, and Luminous Radio. Many more of you are following on our own Vatican Media channel, some of you through our Vatican News website. We have two apps, a Vatican Radio app or the Vatican News Live Events app, and many others joining us through the various Vatican Media social media channels and our Facebook Live feed. Still others of you tuning in through shortwave radio and other diocesan radio stations. However, you're joining us today, a most warm welcome to you. There are quite a number of families, many more flags here today than normal from a four-day meeting. The World Meeting of Families took place in the Paul VI Hall these past few days, and it closed last night with a liturgy, which our Holy Father was present at. He did not celebrate the liturgy, but he was there, and he preached his homily on today's gospel reading. You can definitely find that, all this information on the Vatican News web portal as well as at uh, vatican.va where full texts of our Holy Father's discourses and homilies are uploaded. We hear the crowd here chanting, waiting for our Holy Father. We are joining them in expectation of him. He'll be appearing at the window in the Apostolic Palace. We see it now in the background here with the banner unfurled. This is a, a weekly occasion for the Holy Father to preach, to preach on the Sunday liturgy and also to greet the people of Rome who've come and pilgrims from all over the world. Many of you may have had the opportunity or maybe looking forward to a similar opportunity. And by the roar of the crowd, it looks like here we, we see him now coming to the window. We now await the words of our Holy Father on this 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Dear brothers and sisters, buongiorno or good day. Il Vangelo della liturgia di questa domenica. The Gospel for this Sunday's liturgy tells us about a turning point. Dice così. This is what it says. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus made the resolute decision to set his face to go to Jerusalem. And so he begins 
his great journey toward the holy city, which required a special decision because it was his last one. The disciples, filled with enthusiasm because they were still too worldly, dream that the Master is going to meet with triumph. Instead, Jesus knows that rejection and death await him in Jerusalem. He knows he will have to suffer a great deal. This is what demands a resolute decision. And so his step becomes decisive going toward Jerusalem. This is exactly the same decision we must take if we want to be disciples of Jesus. What does this decision consist of? Because we have to be disciples of serious disciples of Jesus, taking a, a true decision, not not as uh, an old lady used to say to me, um, uh, whitewashed uh, disciples. The episode the evangelist Luke, narr Luke narrates after helps us understand of what this decision consists. Having learned that Jesus is headed toward Jerusalem, this city of their adversaries, a village of Samaritans does not welcome him. Outraged, the apostles James and John suggest to Jesus that he should punish those people by raining fire from heaven down on them. Not only does Jesus not accept this proposal, he also rebu rebukes the two brothers. They want to involve Jesus in their desire for revenge, and he will have none of it. The fire that Jesus came to bring on earth is something else. It's the merciful love of the Father. And um, to make this fire grow, it takes patience, it takes constancy, it takes a penitential spirit. James and John instead allow themselves to be overcome by anger. This happens to us too when, even when we are doing something good, perhaps even with sacrifice, we, we find a closed door instead of being welcomed, so we get angry. We even try to involve God himself threatening heavenly punishments. Jesus instead takes another route. Not that of anger, but that of a resolute decision to go forward, which far from translating into harshness implies calm, patience, long-suffering. Not slackening the least bit in doing good. This way of being does not connote weakness, but on the contrary, a tremendous interior strength. It is easy to allow ourselves to be overcome by anger when faced with opposition. That's natural. What is difficult instead is to master oneself, doing as Jesus did, who, as the Gospel says, went on to another village. This means that when we meet with opposition, we must turn toward doing good elsewhere without recrimination. This way, Jesus helps us to be people who are serene, who are happy with the good accomplished, and who do not seek human approval. And so now let's ask ourselves, what point are we at? What point are we at in the face of opposition, misunderstanding? Do we turn to the Lord? Do we ask him for his steadfastness in doing good? Or do we rather seek confirmation through applause, ending up being bitter and resentful when we don't hear it? How often, consciously or unconsciously, we want applause, the approbation of other people. And we do things for applause. This doesn't work. We must do good as a service and not seek applause. Sometimes we think that our fervor is due to a sense of justice for a cause, but in reality, most of the time, it's nothing other than pride, united with weakness, sensitivity, and impatience. So let's ask Jesus for the strength of being like him, of following him with a resolute decision 
on this path of service not to be vindictive not to be intolerant when difficulties present themselves when we spend ourselves in doing good and others don't understand this even when they disqualify us no, be quiet and continue forward may the Virgin Mary help us make the resolute decision for Jesus that Jesus did to remain in love to the end Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicto tu mulieribus, et benedicto frutto ventis tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Dice Ancilla Domini, fiat mi secundum verbum tu. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu mulieribus et benedicto fruttus ventis tu Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. E bello un caro factum est. Et abitavit in nobis. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus et benedicto fruttus ventis tu Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. Ora pro novi, Santa dei Centri. Uttigni e fici amor promissioni bus Christi. Grazie a Tua, in questo modo, mine menti bus nostri si infunde. Ucchi angelo annunziante, Christi fili tu incarnazione in cognovimus, per passione meius ed crucem, a resurrezione e gloria perducamur. Per Cristo un dominum nostrum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, et Figlio, et Spirito e Santo. Sicutera ti in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secola seculorum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, et Figlio, et Spirito e Santo. Sicutera ti in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secola seculorum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, et Figlio, et Spirito e Santo. Sicutera ti in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secola seculorum. Amen. Profideli vos defuntis, requim eterna andona eis Domine. Et lus perpetua lucia Deis. Requejant in pace. Amen. Sit nomen Domini benedictum. Esoxo nunque tus que in seculum. Aiutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Qui fecit celum et terram. Benedicat vos, omnipotent Deus, Pater, Filius, Espiritu Santus. Amen. Thousands gathered here in St. Peter's Square responding to our Holy Father's discourse and prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, I follow with a lot of preoccupation what's happening in Ecuador. I'm near them, and I encourage all parts to, to try not to be violent. Only through dialogue can we find hopefully soon social peace with particular attention to the marginalized populations who are poorer, always respecting everyone's rights and um, the uh, leaders of the people, the institutions of the people. I'd like to express my nearness to the families and, and sisters of Sister Luisa del Orto, a little sister of the Gospel of Charles de Foucault, who was killed yesterday at Porta Prince, the capital of Haiti. For 20 years, she used to say that she dedicated herself to children on the streets. I entrust her soul to God, and I pray for the Haitian people, especially for the least, so that they might have a more serene future without misery and without violence. Sister Luisa made her life a gift for others, even to martyrdom. I greet all of you, Romans and pilgrims from Italy and many, and he's greeting the people from Argentina. He saw the flag. He's greeting his his fellow citizens. I greet the faithful who are here from Lisbon, the students from an Institute of Notre Dame in France. There they are. And a school, a students from um, 
somewhere in Austria. I greet the uh, Polyphonic Choir and a group from Rovigo. We see there are also flags uh, from Ukraine. There in Ukraine, the bombardments continue, which are causing death, destruction, and suffering for the population. Please, let's not forget this people that's afflicted by war. Let's not forget in our hearts nor in our prayers. I hope I, I wish all of you a good Sunday and please don't forget to pray for me. Enjoy your meal and arrivederci. We'll see each other again. Our Holy Father ending his weekly Sunday reflection and Angelus. We'll be back again on Wednesday around 9.30 local time in Rome for the live broadcast of the liturgy for the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul in which the pallia for newly appointed archbishops will be blessed. I invite you to visit the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts for coverage of today's Angelus and other Vatican and world news. Special thanks go to Adriano Vitale, our in-studio audio engineer, and John Charles Puzzolu, our audio coordinator, and to all our partner television and radio stations who've made this broadcast possible. I'm Sister Bernadette, and it has been a pleasure providing the English language texts and commentary for you today. Laudator Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. <laughs>